Hi, everyone. Welcome to NDF's 2021 virtual speaker series, generously sponsored by the Rotary Club of Beverly Hills. I'm Nancy Lurie, NDF's Chief Operating Officer, and I'm so glad to welcome you with, here with us this morning. Today's presentation is one that I know many of us have been looking forward to. As patient advocacy program managers, our presenters, Amy and Tara, are important members of the NDF team and tremendous resources to the entire GNEM patient community. In addition to the many, many ways she helps us, Amy, a former special education teacher, just finished up her term as National Community Advisory Member of the MDA, which recently featured her in their national magazine where she was able to shine a bright light on GE myopathy. She was the recipient of a 2020 Rare Artist Award from the Every Life Foundation and served as a coordinator for the Rare Disease Legislative Advocates during this year's Rare Disease Week. Tara, who has had careers in education and clinical nutrition, speaks with patients all over the world at different stages of their disease journey and currently sits on the Every Life Foundation's Community Congress Public Policy Working Committee and is a member of Global Gene's Rare Compassion Program. Tara speaks several languages and spends countless hours devoting her time and energy to all the people who reach out to her for resources, perspective, and guidance. We're beyond grateful for their partnership and for the partnership of all of our certified patient advocates around the world, many of whom are joining us here today. And I look forward to learning from them today along with all of you. Please feel free to add questions to the Q&A, which we'll address at the end of Tara and Amy's presentation. So with that, I will hand it over to Tara and Amy. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara. Um, so we're, here's an overview of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give an introduction to assistive and adaptive equipment, implements, and gadgets. Adaptive aids are devices or equipment which enable a person with physical disability to perform daily activities, either with or without help from another person. We'll learn about the various devices and options available to us when choosing a suitable equipment. We'll hear and see demo of the use of some functional and practical equipment. And we will participate and share a piece of equipment that we find helpful. So please feel free at, when we get to that point to share something that you find helpful to you. Hi everyone, I'm Amy. I'm just gonna go over two disclaimers that we have. Uh, one disclaimer is that anything that we have on here on the, on the presentation, uh, when you click on it or it led, leads you to a third party website, it's provided for informational purposes only and it is not uh, considered an endorsement by NDF or any of its affiliates by any websites or specific products. And our second uh, disclaimer is that this presentation and anything that you can download uh, is not considered uh, medical advice and uh, do uh, uh, please consider contacting your doctor if you think about anything that you would like to use. So we're gonna go into our patient uh, resources presentation and uh, Tara is going to start uh, first. Hello everyone, I want to welcome you. And of course I'm Tara and I am a GNE myopathy patient. I live on the central coast of California and I would like to give you a brief summary on how I go about um, selecting and choosing adaptive aids. As many of you know, I come from a family of seven siblings, of which five of us suffer from GNE myopathy. From a very young age, from a teenage, since I was a teenager, I've seen the progression of GNE myopathy in my siblings. That was about 45 years ago. As I've di directly seen the progression of this disease from a very early stage, to I think the most advanced stage, I've gained some personal insights into how I must adjust in order to be physically independent for as long as. So here is, here is how I go adapting to my muscle weakness. Whenever I experience a decline or a point in my strength, I usually try to delay the use of an, any adaptive equipment my tendency is to keep trying different ways to see if I can do the same activity. 
for as long as possible. Of course, I pay attention to safety issue. So method is to delay any motorized automated equipment for as long as I can. So, and I know all of us, we, we pay attention to our strength, our balance and endurance. And we know at some inner level, inner insight we have into when we should start using adaptive devices. As a side point, I know many of us may feel some kind of cultural stigma when using adaptive devices. And this is a very difficult and emotional place to be. However, safety is very important and we must pay attention to safety and avoid falls at all costs. So today I want to share with you a few of my favorites that I started using last year and currently using. As, as many of you know, and we've all been dealing with COVID-19 and all our gyms were closed in the area I live. Um, and I used to go to the gym five days a week. So I was figuring out how I could exercise, especially my legs. Um, so after researching many different options, I decided to buy a pro form hybrid trainer. All right, so we're going into uh, the Prezi that has the exercise equipment. And we're going to show Tara's equipment. So this uh, pro form, the, the reason I like it is the seats adjustable the pedals are adjustable. I could stand and use it as well as sit and use it. Uh, it costs about $700. I usually use a new step, but the new step costs anywhere from $5,000 to $8,000, which I really couldn't afford. So this one I find very versatile and um, I am unable to do circular motions with my feet. So this, the pedals on this is a push-pull motion with my feet. And there's a video with a guy demonstrating how to use this uh, ProForm trainer and he's disabled. So um, when you have time, uh, you could go to the Neuromuscular Disease Foundation website and look into the video. Um, so the next item, oh, by the way, this also has an iFit trial membership. So for all of you tech buffs out there who want to get into the iFit, it, it has that option. My second item that I really, really enjoy, and I'm using it every day, actually every night, is a fitted sheet, which is heated, and it costs about $57. So I started using this uh, heated, it's called heated mattress pad. It's like a heated sheet to me because it's not um, very thick. And I know some of us need either satin or silky sheet in order to turn in bed. And that you could put the satin sheet or the silk sheet on top of this heated mattress pad and still feel the heat. Um, our average temperature where I live is about 42 to 73 degrees year round. And um, my legs tend to get really cold at night. And so this really helps my legs. I don't have to wear socks or any compression socks or anything when I'm using this heated fitted sheet. Um, it's very comfortable. It comes in various sizes. It's machine washable. There's no wires po poking you. It has four timing modules, modes, 
you could set it for one hour up to 10 hours and it has eight le levels of heat intensity and the heat is very consistent um, consistently distributed with this sheet i've tried a heating blanket but for me the heating blanket is very heavy and it impedes my turning in bed so this heated mattress pad is very useful for me and also this heated um, mattress pad was suggested by another patient in our uh, GNE myopathy community. So I want to thank her for that. So the third item that I've been started using this year is a six foot lightweight folding ramp. It folds up like a suitcase. It costs $250. Maybe you could get it cheaper on some other website. I like this ramp because it only weighs 35 pounds and it folds up like a suitcase. And uh, my petite, my daughter is petite. And so she's even able to carry this ramp when we go out. Um, the holiday season is coming up and I haven't been really able to visit some of my uh, siblings who have two to three steps to get into their house. Um, so, I'm looking forward to using this um, six foot portable ramp when I, when I go visit them now. Also, there's a guide that comes with this ramp or on the website that tells you how long of a ramp you need. If you need a six foot, a four foot or an eight foot, it will give you the guide as to the gradient and the slope of the area and how long of a ramp you need to buy. And now I'll give it over to Amy to talk about her favorite items. So at the end of going over all the favorite items, we're gonna show you how to go through this presentation. Um, I'm gonna start with one of my favorite items is in the office or school here. It's called the Rocket Book. Uh, it is difficult for me to hold uh, larger notebooks and or carry around a laptop if I'm going to different meetings and need to write down notes. Uh, so I, my partner found the rocket book for me and this book, you use a special pen called the Fusion and you can write in this notebook and then you can send it off the, the notes that you take to a cloud, uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, Evernote, all the different things it works with and then you can use damp cloth and wipe the pages clean and then reuse it again and again. So you can see in this picture, they give you the cloth and they give you the pen and then you can buy more pens in all different colors. And then it shows you in this bottom picture here that you can scan and send your notes off to whatever cloud that you use and you're good to go. Um, the reason why I like it is that it's lightweight. It's not the same size as an, uh, a regular spiral notebook and it's smaller than those marble notebooks we used to have when we were younger. So it's really uh, small and lightweight. Um, you don't need to have a big backpack to carry it. It can fit in most purses now that we have these days. And um, it has, I believe, 30 some, oh, it says it up top here, 36 pages. Uh, so you can use it for if you're going to school still or you're going to multiple work meetings, you can use it for multiple meetings or classes at once and then send them off to your drive and then clean it up and you're ready to go for the next one. Um, so for me, this was a game changer because I like to keep organized and, but I needed something lightweight. Uh, so my rocket book really changed the way that I do things. And it was easy for me to take notes with me everywhere to doctor's appointments and things like that without having to carry something big and bulky. Um, and not having to worry about taking notes on my iPhone. I can't type that fast um, or an iPad. I can't, I can't use my fingers that fast, but I can still write and this helped me with that. Um, so this is called the Rocket Book. They have other, there's other brands out there, but this is the brand that uh, my partner found for me and it works out really well. The second thing I'm going to show you, we're gonna come back to the main uh, page here and we're gonna go into personal care. Uh, last year, many patients uh, were questioning um, 
hygiene and how to take care of themselves when toileting. Uh, so I looked at the Facebook and uh, with some of my siblings input, we found that a bidet toilet seat uh, can help you um, with your hygiene. And so I, my, one of my siblings bought the Toto bidet toilet seat and this toilet seat um, does help you with your hygiene uh, without having to worry about being able to reach um, and get the toilet paper and reach uh, wiping yourself. And this toilet seat uh, is adjustable with the spray and how much pressure you can see here. It shows you the different ways that it can do that. I have a video here for it. And it, this is not a remote one uh, with our disease. It is very possible for you to drop the remote and then uh, you are uh, stuck uh, not being able to use the toilet seat. So this one has the, re, uh, the buttons are on the side of the toilet seat. Um, and it has a bunch of different things here where the seat um, soft closes, uh, the pressure settings, it has a warm water option. The only thing I noticed when researching these bidet seats is that in order for you to use warm water, your sink does have to be near the toilet seat. So it wouldn't be an option for me where my sink is across the bathroom from me. So we couldn't run the, the water um, that way. So you, you have to be uh, cognizant of that. We would only use a cold water uh, bidet toilet seat for that. Um, this one also has something that's called a pre-mist. Um, it says it helps prevent waste from sticking to the toilet by using incoming water supply uh, before and after each use. Uh, so it helps with uh, toilet cleaning as well. And then uh, it has the, the wand is uh, self-cleaning. It cleans the inside and outside. Um, so this is something that uh, us patients can think about. And I'm just gonna go back one step. And that's a toilet seat that you can attach to your regular toilet. And then I also found um, if we cannot replace our toilet seat because maybe it's a specialized toilet seat that raises up a little bit, there's also a bidet attachments for us um, that can go under our current toilet seat. Uh, this is just one brand I looked up on the internet um, and it comes with different levels of price and what it can do for you. Um, cold water, warm water, um, it says front wash and rear wash. So these are different things that we can do for ourselves. Also, I'm just going back out here a little bit more. Oops, sorry. Going back in a little more time. Um, we added a bunch of different wiping aids in here as you know, last year, a lot of people were asking. So I put in uh, four different wiping aids besides the bidets uh, that you can look into and see if one of them may work for you as well. The third thing I wanted to go over is going to be in our emergency preparedness presentation. Um, this year, I asked one company if I could get a sample bracelet um, to try out. It's a medical alert bracelet. Um, they gave me a free sample, I have it here. I got the red one. Um, and this is a QR code medical bracelet and it's different from other bracelets in that um, it doesn't have your personal information directly related on the bracelet here. You could get it engraved, they do offer that. But what I liked about this bracelet was that you can get your medical information through an, uh, and a website right here, their phone number or through the QR code. Um, at first I was concerned because there are people out there who try to steal information just through um, you know, apps that can read QR codes and just you know, scam you. But the thing with this one is, is that the QR code you need on the QR code, you need an ID and a pin. Um, so if uh, the ambulance is picking you up or anything like that, they scan the QR code and they have to put an ID and a pin that is written down on your bracelet. Um, so I like that if the scammer is trying to like get your QR code to get any information, they'd have to find that ID and pin and they don't have that. Um, I also like that with this company, there's many different options for you. You don't just necessarily need a bracelet. You could buy this little pod and put that wherever you need it. They have stickers, a wallet card. They have this uh, cute little sleeve that you can just put over the, the band of your watch or your smart watches. Um, they have a keychain and they, they have bracelets. Um, I'm just gonna show you a sample of 
how I used it. I set up my bracelet and I read the QR code into my phone. And this is what showed up. The first thing that showed up was the first responder had to log in my ID and my pin. And then here's what showed up. Uh, none of the information I put in here is real, just letting you know. Um, so here's my name and it says I'm from here, here US. So I didn't put any real location in. Um, and then it says vital medical conditions. I put in GNA myopathy and you can put in some notes. Um, I just copy and pasted what everything uh, that it says on the Cure GNEM website about GNE myopathy. Um, then it says personal information. So I wrote that I was born yesterday um, and I put in a fake phone number and just some other fake information about hair and eye color and height. My emergency contact is uh, my mother whose fake name happens to be Betty and some fake phone numbers and a fake Gmail just for this instance here. And I have an allergy of ragweed and over here it just continues dust. And I have medicine number one, daily dosed. And then it says notify emergency contacts. So I clicked on that and I took a screenshot and here it's showing how they would notify my emergency contact of Betty. But you know, Betty here is, has a fake Gmail and a fake uh, phone number. So it's not showing you exactly how they would notify them because the numbers aren't real. So this is what someone, uh, an emergency responder would see if they went into the information uh, that is on my bracelet. Um, so I like that you have to have the ID and the pin number. You can't just automatically go in and you control what they see. Um, there is also a paid option of $1.99 a month where you can add even more information like your insurance and uh, information like that. Um, so I did not opt in for that. Um, I, I'm still unsure about sending out my insurance information onto something like this, but I do like that this is a viable option to have on me at all times. Uh, we're going to go into now uh, some certified patient advocates sent in uh, information or equipment that they like to use. So we're going to show um, what Roberta sent us, and she sent us in something uh, that is for transfers. So we're going to go into personal care here. And we're going to go into transfers. And she sent us in something to help us go from sitting to standing. Um, this is a sit to stand aid. Um, it's an adjustable belt. It's for men and women. And it will help you uh, go from sitting to standing. It's connected with a handle so that the person who's helping you can pull and you can also here hold the handle. Um, and it's, it says it's easy and the belt can be used by both of you. And it says it also can be used to help you assist in walking. Um, there's no grip slip on the handles. Um, the sitting person's hands holds the inner side of the handle and maintains your posture and balance. Um, with the help of the lift belt, the helper easily grips the outer side of the handle and helps the person up. I thought this was a really great idea. Um, I often use, uh, with someone helping me to stand up, I often use the pockets of a jacket um, right where that waist is to help me with a little oomph when I get to uh, standing up. So I think that this is a great aid for us. And I thank Roberta for sending this in. Um, Saskia sent us uh, some technology that I think is pretty interesting here. We have a power wheelchair head control. Um, this is from a company in Germany. Uh, it is looks like a pair of smart glasses here. And all you need to do is move your head and it controls your wheelchair. Um, it's, uh, when you watch this video, it's, it's pretty amazing that you just need to move your head and it tells your wheelchair how to move. Um, they, this company also has that you can uh, use it for your home as a smart um, as a smart home. Like it, you can power, you know, your lights and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's absolutely amazing, and uh, it's it's. I'm really excited for Saskia to have it, so then we can have a patient uh, video up here of how it's going to work. Um, so when you have a chance to check out this video. Uh, I'm excited to see these smart glasses uh, working a wheelchair. Then we're going to go to Suleiman. Uh, it's also in this technology button. He has shown us 
uh, how a head can uh, become a mouse by using the movement of your head or by using blinking. So I'm gonna just click into this one. And uh, so this is a 3D head mouse. So they print it out and then you can uh, attach it to your wheelchair and this head mouse uh, controls your computer by the movement of your head. Um, they have a video here that you can watch. Um, it says you can get used to using this device in about 10 minutes. Uh, you can check your social media accounts with it. You, um, it is more useful than the mouth sticks to use a computer. Um, the device allows you to use your Android phone and your tablet with uh, head movements only. Um, this one is by using blinking. So these are glasses that allow you to control your smartphones and computers with blinking. Um, uh, it helps you to go through social media, text, and call anyone with your smartphone uh, by using your eyes. And then he also sent us a joystick mouse. Um, it's designed to be compatible with a computer and smartphones, and you can control the pointer with a joystick. Uh, so thank you, Suleiman, for sending us those three. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how we changed it from last year. Um, last year, the presentation was just so big that it was really tough to load on your computers and your smartphones or tablets. So we broke it down this year into four different presentations. So you'll see now that when you go onto the website, you're gonna get this main page. We're calling this the home page. Um, so you have personal care is one whole presentation. And to get to it, you click down here at the bottom. In and out of home is another whole presentation. Exercise, recreation and travel is another whole presentation and emergency preparedness is the last one. So we have here written an index of which is in each one. So personal care tells you bathing, toileting, dressing. Um, and in this one, we also put moving independently because um, uh, we discussed this and we feel that that's also a personal thing for you to be able to move independently. Um, in and out of home, this includes gadgets that we use in each room. Uh, so think of like in the kitchen, that could be things to help us cook or in the bedroom, like that sheet that Tara was talking about. Um, office and school, the rocket book I told you about. Some things will be in each presentation just because they overlap. Exercise, recreation and travel, the exercise equipment, um, things to help you with your hobbies. And then emergency preparedness, that kind of explains itself, things to do in an emergency and keep yourself safe. So then when you click on one of these links, it takes you to a separate presentation. So I'll click on personal care. Once you get into the presentation, if you find out this is not the one you want, we have a home button here. So you click on home and you click on that and it should take you back to this main presentation. Everything will be, well, not everything. Things will be added each time we get new information or you know, we see somebody said, oh, I use this now on Facebook. I try to keep updating this as I see people saying like this works for me. I, I add that to this presentation. Um, and if you have anything that you want me to add, uh, email it, feel free to. The smallest little things, um, even, even if you think it's just a little, little item, feel free to add it. It, it might work for us. Um, I'm showing you right now <clears throat> the smallest little thing. Uh, my sister needs cushion on her foot plates because it's, it's hard on her feet. And she found out that you know, using what the wheelchair company said to use is hundreds of dollars, but she found a little a tip here that using mouse pads cushions her feet just as well, and it's much cheaper. So even if it's something little like that, feel free to tell us. You know, we talk about using adaptive aids and, and some of the questions that may be helpful to all of us when selecting aids are the questions listed here. Do I need to consult a physical therapist, occupational therapist, or another expert before choosing an equipment? Will it increase or assist me in my ability to perform activities of daily living, such as dressing, bathing, eating, and grooming? 
Will it prevent the risk of falls or injuries? Will it improve my ability to live successfully in my life? Will this piece of equipment increase my safety, security, and accessibility in my environment, home, workplace, visiting family and friends? Is it affordable or can I get insurance to cover the cost? Or can I get it from a loan closet? I know the Muscular Dis uh, Dystrophy Association used to have loan closet. I don't know, they may still have it in certain parts of um, the US. Um, or, or are there charities or can I raise funds to buy this equipment? How will this equipment enhance or add quality to my life? And I think quality of life, it's a major issue for us. And so how, how will this add quality to our life? Will it preserve and or slow my muscles deterioration? Will it replace or be an improvement for another equipment? And is it practical, functional, and what's the frequency of use? And there may be other questions that you want, you know, to add and ask yourself when selecting uh, an adaptive equipment. So the key takeaways of our presentation today are, there are many adaptive devices options available for us with a muscle disease. And muscle, it's not only appropriate the stuff we presented today for just GNE myopathy, but I would say most neuromuscular diseases. Um, we need to try out and investigate the ones which would work for individual unique ability. And technology is expanding at the rapid speed which benefits us and many more appropriate devices are constantly coming on the market. Always keep your safety in mind when choosing devices. Okay, thank you guys, that was amazing. Um, I know that, um... That was just invaluable information and I can't wait to buy my heated sheet personally. So thank you for that one, especially. And Saskia, I'm excited to hear about um, what you recommend and how that works for you. I know that there's something there for everybody who's watching this. And, and just as a reminder, this will be available on our learning library on our new website, CureGNEM. Org. Um, but in the meantime, we want to open it up to anyone who might have their own practical tips, gadgets, or devices that you're using that um, you want to share with the group. And uh, so you can, you can raise your hand, you can enter it in the chat. There uh, is one question about um, asking, and you might be able to show it on the Prezi if you have it, Amy, uh, suggestions on good devices. Oops, uh, the question just disappeared on me. Hold on one sec. Let me go back to the chat. Questions for helping gripping things like opening a water bottle. Do you, can you go back to the Prezi and show that or is it easier for you to talk about it? I think it's great for everyone to get a chance to really see the Prezi and, um, and as you all probably know, it will be, it is available. It's available now on our website and you can really, I've spent some time just navigating in and out of the bubbles. Uh, there have to be, I was saying to Amy and Tari yesterday, there have to be a thousand items on there, maybe more. I don't know if you've kept track, Amy, but it really is a, I don't wanna say exhaustive because obviously there's always gonna be more, but it is a comprehensive list of things. And um, we'd love to add to it if anyone has things that, that they don't see there or things that have worked for them. So we have the, the easy hold that helps you. They have different sizes. Um, to show it in this picture here, they have all different sizes here that help you hold. Um, objects. Um, we have the grasping cuff that will also help you hold objects. Uh, they have the universal cuff will also help you hold objects. Um, this one has the universal cuff with foam. 
and the, the foam tubing won't help you. Um, I can also attest that what I do here is I have a strap attached to any like bottle. So I put my hand through the strap and then I hold my bottle. Um, so that way, if my grip isn't that strong, if it drops, it doesn't, it drops like an inch. So that's what I use. I use a strap on my bottles. That's great. As you can see, you guys, as um, while Amy navigates through here, there's just an endless amount of, of places you can go and things you can check out on your own. And it just keeps going. You know, as you get to each bubble, there's more bubbles within the bubbles. And I think you'll see when you have a chance to navigate it for yourself that there's a lot here you might not have even thought of as, as potential help. So um, it's, it's really a tremendous resource and we're very proud of the work that Amy and Tara have put into it. We look forward to um, adding whatever things you guys have to, um, to supplement it. Uh, I'll just, before we go, I just wanna know if anybody, um, I'll give Amy and Tara the last word of course, but I wanna see if anybody has any uh, thing that they would like to share themselves. Um, Someone asked how many items in the Prezi. I think I just said, I, I don't even know. Do you know, Amy? Uh, I have not counted. I also would like to see an eating and drinking. I didn't even think of this. I also have handles in here that show, like here's the Tervis handle that will help you put handles on cups that don't have handles. That's great. And I know the Easy Hold people were at our event a couple of years ago and they mm -hmm. brought them for everyone to, to try. And those were those were super helpful for a lot of people as well. Harmony yeah. mentioned a new gadget that she just got called Zubits. It's a magnetic device that helps with shoelaces. She said she hasn't tried it yet, but she looks she thinks it'll it looks like it'll be helpful. Okay. I know last year we focused a lot on shoelaces. So um, yeah. it'll be interesting to check that out. Thank you, Harmony. Mm -hmm. I I try to make it as intuitive as possible. I mean, so if you think it's not there, it probably is. You might have to email me. So like there's dressing and in there, this is clothes and then um, adaptive clothing. So, and then I try to, you know, put it all in there and you can find adaptive clothing websites. Um, so I, I do try to, it's as intuitive as my brain works. So I'm, I try to, hopefully it, it's, it makes it as easy enough for other people to follow as well. Um, Is there any kind of search function that they build into that, Amy? No, I can look into that though. Yeah, that would be good. And I yeah. do try to put like transfers and falls. I try to put that in each presentation because those are very important, like the safety issues. Right. So, so a lot of things are sometimes in more than one separate presentation because they apply in lots of different yes. categories. Like the holding of a cup uh, or a bottle. Like you found it, I, you could find it in eating and drinking, but you could also find it in general use because you could, you could need it to hold other things. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think that you have answered all the questions that people could possibly have. So it doesn't look to me like we have any questions. Um, and if anyone wants to share their information, um, you can email us either at info at CureGNEM or you can uh, email Tara or Amy directly if you're having trouble finding something on the Prezi, if you think something isn't there, if you think that you have another um, option of something that is there that we can add to it, we're always, this is definitely a living, breathing document and we're always looking to add to it. So Tara and Amy, anything else before I thank everyone for joining us? No, I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. It was uh, good to have you. Uh, yes, thank you. you. Thank Definitely. You. Thank you all for joining us. I hope you found it as informative as I have. Um, and as I mentioned, this recording, along with all the recordings from our speaker series event and this Prezi presentation are available on our new, uh, newly launched website, curedgnem.org. So we hope that uh, we will see you there and that we'll see you on our future speaker series events sometime soon. Thank you all. <laughs>